Welcome back to another edition of Idology, your weekly deep dive into all things American Idol, unofficially sponsored by the eye rolls of Mariah Carey and Nicki Minaj. But baby, you doing Chris, <laughs> baby? but the Chris tonight? <laughs> I'm here today with season six standout Melinda Doolittle, joining us via Skype from some top secret location in Florida. So top secret, I don't actually know the name of the city. <laughs> but I'm here, and I'm here to sing, and I'm happy about it. We've got a lot to pack into this episode. Because you asked me to. I know you were up at 4.30 a.m. to catch your flight and you had to deal with the season 12 guys the night before, so I apologize for that. We gotta wash the taste of dung out of our mouth with something. Let's start on a positive note with the ladies. There were only maybe one or two slight train wrecks, one maybe not so slight. Poor Miss Oosley. I, you know she's gotta be able to do better than that, but it just... She does. She's a background singer. You don't know a thing about me. I'm actually really excited about the five that made it through. Those are the five that I chose after watching the first ten. Mm -hmm. I know that there were people that were a little upset about Isabel getting cut, but I was not one of those people. But don't say There are some others that are upset about Shuba not getting put in. I feel differently than some of the other people on the, on the panel. Only four of them made an absolute 100% definitive case for making it through to the semifinal. And that was obviously Cree, Amber, Angela, and Adriana. I would have given it to Shuba over Tina. And I can't even say that Shuba was great or, or even good, but she was interesting. And she tried to do something a little different. At the end, it was a little bit like Will Ferrell and Anna Gasteyer on SNL when they <laughs> used to do the sort of like really square peg versions of pop hits. Her moves were kind of choppy and crazy. Don't be a drag, just be a queen. I appreciated the effort and even if it was a little catastrophic, sort of. She wasn't good. <laughs> you said she reminded you of a Saturday Night Live hit. <laughs> and you said it was slightly catastrophic. <laughs> and this is what we're rewarding. It was still better than Tina Torres. How in the world was that better than Tina? Tell me I'm on my own. The top of her range is a little bit hard to deal with just in tone, but the beginning of that song was gorgeous. Someone's bound to him. Let's not say she sounded great. I, I let's not get carried away. I mean, the upper part, the upper part of her register is like back when I was in grade school. The nuns used to be able to grab your ear or, or put you over a desk and hit you. That's like a nun pulling on your ear. The upper part of her register. It's, it just sort of makes you go like. <gasps> she picked a song with a good melody. When Zonette was like, oh, oh, I was like, where the hook at? Where the hook at? <laughs> we were going positive, I think. Where? I've gotta say, Cree Harrison for me wins the night. Oh. Hands down. Something about you is just so sexy when you sing. She didn't put on too much makeup and she didn't have a whole hair situation. I did love that Nikki called out Tina and was like, The hair what? that you had originally, it, it made you look a little younger. This one is aging you. That's a great critique. And yes. Cree came out just looking great and looking at ease and sounded fantastic. Cree was a palate cleanser for me. Mm -hmm. that she just set the tone for the rest of the night. When I saw Cree Harrison perform and I saw her heart and I just said, you know what, that's what it's about. I credit her for being a demo singer because to sing demos, you have to understand what the songwriter is really trying to get out in that song and be able to emote that just with your voice. And she is so amazingly able to do that that I can't wait to hear more. How about Amber Holcomb? She like popped out of the ground like Kelly and Michelle during Beyonce's Super Bowl performance. I was like, who, who's that? She's beautiful. She seems kind of witty and has a little bit of an edge to her personality. Pretty little dimples. <laughs> oh, thank you. We also just have to mention that Amber did sing My Funny Valentine, which I think most people, myself included, consider a Melinda Doolittle song, at least in the Idol universe. And- Which is hilarious. It's, it's, and not true at all. <laughs> Oh, but it is the truth. It's public domain, <laughs> and she blew it out of the water. <laughs> you can easily like both performances of My Funny Valentine and still be okay, yeah. as long as you go to iTunes and buy mine. <laughs> <laughs> Touche.
Let's switch gears to the guys. <laughs> I know that they want a girl to win this season, but really these are 10 of the 20 guys that you've narrowed it down to? Curtis and Devin made the case for themselves to at least advance to the top 20. Before I even say that, who is Elijah? <laughs> Where did he come from? <laughs> Can we just real quickly take a side note and, and you explain Elijah to me? Talking to I at least respect that Keith was like, you look like a freaking pop star, man. And Nikki was like, basically wanting to just devour him. I want to have your babies. She didn't say like, your vocal was fantastic or I'm putting you through because okay. you're a great singer. It was like, I think you're hot and I want to look at you for a few more weeks. I don't care about that song. That's happened in previous seasons of Idol and the judges were just too nervous to say it out loud and at least okay. she put it out there. Like you're a hot little number and I like looking at you. The other contestant for me that I'm just completely confounded by him making it through was Charlie. Nothing about his performance of Rocket Man worked. I'm a rocket man. He was visibly trembling for starters. And then everybody's like, you've got such great confidence. That was a scared child. <laughs> I think he's reading his own press or buying into it a little too much because he didn't even bother to let the judges finish. No. No. When I'm agreeing with Randy, like, then I'm starting to get annoyed. Forget singing tonight, let's just all perform. <laughs> I mean, we're in Vegas, what are we doing? You know that I love me some Charlie, but I love Nature Boy Charlie. In a lot of ways, it's it's really more of a connection competition. Not Freddie Mercury, but not quite Charlie. So Melinda, to finish off the guys, I thought Curtis's vocal on Superstar was actually really technically quite good, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get past his smugness. <laughs> When he came out and was like, I don't know if I'm gonna get through it. Nikki was like, please. Would you please stop with this act? I loved her for that. I loved that she did that to him. You know damn well you going through. Congratulations. <laughs> Boy can sing. I I feel like he is pretty gospel-y in his singing, but I feel like it's more of like a practice gospel. Like I felt like if Josh Ledette was the one that just went with his gut and yes. just sang whatever came out, Curtis is like this is the exact run that I'm going to sing, and I'm going to sing it just like this, and there is no veering from that. For Devin, I don't think his problem stems from the same spot, but I feel like he didn't have enough exclamation points and italics through the course of that song. Compared to everybody else, it was a total winner. That key change probably should not have happened. His money key was the key at the beginning, and mm -hmm. I think staying there probably would have been the best Best case scenario, I love that he went into Spanish. When I say that Devin, Devin lacked a little impact, I don't mean what Mariah Carey said to Kevin. You can take a note and bring it 56 places. No, please don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Don't do it, Devin. That's not what we're talking about. Can I also say that I'm not, I'm not that mad at Jada for that fearless performance. I might have bounced Charlie and Elijah and added Jada and Kevin. I would have bounced Elijah and Charlie for Jada and Johnny. I just feel like you should definitely shave. I'm having a problem with stubble. And I was gonna ask you that. Yeah, I think without the stubble, he might've made it through the top five. <laughs> Last two things we've gotta bring up. Two little weird conspiracy-ish things. Number one, Angela Miller, not critiqued on her performance of that Jesse J song at all. Everybody was like, let's talk about what you did last week. I love the original song. Your original song that you wrote. Nikki was really actually the only judge who sort of hinted at what she meant. Don't overdo it. And I feel like Angela did overdo it a little bit. The vocal was a little overbaked. I hate that I let you down, and I feel so and it wasn't her best work. And I feel like even though the show has chosen her as one of their golden children, it's early enough in the season that some constructive feedback and some honesty will only help her. I do think that what they did may have helped her. I think even Keith maybe hinted just a tad bit. You do a lot with, you, you can do it with a little. Them not mentioning what she did at all had to hit home just a little bit. The other weird thing this week was the top, I, I don't want to say tiebreaker because it wasn't. Ryan, this is our split decision right here with Paul. If 
two judges have voted for one person and two judges have voted for the other, that's a deadlock. And then Jimmy would come in and decide which of those two contestants he's throwing his vote to. But that's not how the tiebreak played out. The future of Paul rests on you. We're deadlocked on Paul Jolly. Then that leaves a spot for somebody else if they weren't gonna let him through. Like, I'm- Exactly. Jimmy didn't know whose spot he was taking away. That's us pretending that there was any reality to that. That was pure theater. Jimmy wasn't making any decision, or if he did, it was made like seven hours ago in a room with Nigel. The man is running this place just like a big giant man putting his big hand around my neck. You know, the entire two hours didn't make a damn bit of sense. Maybe at that point, all the production assistants and Ryan and, and even and Nigel were like, eh, so what if the tiebreaker makes no sense? We'll get to it next week if there is one again. Yes, next week I will break a tie with myself. But baby, <laughs> you're doing Chris, oh, but the Chris tonight? <laughs> hey, I'm Miranda Cosgrove and you're watching ENTV. Hi, I'm Kevin Williamson and you're watching ENTV. Hello, I am Jennifer Goodwin and you are watching ENTV.